Hello. Howdy. Hey, what's up, man? Not much. Just getting ready to embarrass myself playing some video games. Pretty standard stuff in my stream. All right, man. Outer Wilds, is it? Oh, you're. I see you're. Uh, you've done your research before coming in. <laughs> yeah, I. Um, before the stream started, I was talking in chat with a couple people. I. Uh, um, I told them you should play Disco Elysium. I've been playing Disco Elysium lately, and it is incredibly good. That's a good game. I won't play it on stream though. There's too much talking. I'd be talking over them oh, all the time. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's true. Uh, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna turn you up a little bit on my end. You're a smidge quiet. Can you say oh. something? Hello. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. So what's up? Right. Uh, what do you got in your mind? Well, so uh, definitely by far, my audience has requested me to try to get a hold of you and set something up, do a collaboration. So I'm happy we're here. Um, I didn't really know too much uh, about you. I, I watched, um, oh, what was that uh, discussion you had with, um, oh, she's an anarchist. Um, oh, uh, I can't um, uh, uh, an arco pack. Yes, correct. That's her. And yes. um, I watched that, and I actually quite enjoyed that. I like that. Um, she's a little bit more into the theory and philosophy stuff, uh, like I am. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And other than that, I've just seen miscellaneous uh, clips and stuff. So, <laughs> and and I've I've seen I've seen Twitter stuff uh, about you, and it's, it's oh yeah, De <laughs> definitely a representative sample of my stream and the opinions I hold right there. Um, no, the conversation with an Arco Pack was very nice. She's um she's very bright, very very much into the theory, which I appreciate. Um, hopefully a slightly more uh, accurate representative sample of my content to those Twitter clips, but, you know, one way or another, I'm, uh, I'm here for it. Yeah, definitely. Well, and that's, you know, and I'm, I, I imagine we'd probably get into that, so I, I suppose we can kind of get into that. Yeah, I mean, there's just an entire really weird ideological sort of political fetish online that um, I think is quite harmful, uh, and you... I think definitely an Arcopack, someone like that, definitely does a, a pretty good job at, I, I think, kind of avoiding that and, mm -hmm. and sort of getting away from that. And that's kind of my goal, I, I suppose, as well. I uh, I actually came from a pretty political background, I would say. Like, I was more interested, I, I believe, in, in practical politics, uh, if you will. So sort of like kind of maybe what you do, political analysis, commentary. I would like to um, believe that most of what I do derives from a uh, an appreciation for the practical matter of how to get as many people as possible on your side. That has always been, first and foremost, what I'm concerned with. When you said there was an ideological plague that you, uh, an, ar ar an arco pack, have definitely avoided, what were you referring to exactly? Um, I would say sort of the, the best way to maybe put it into um, general terms is just almost the really weird online nature of politics, right? Of this aesthetic, right? This lifestyle that you can subscribe to. Uh, and, and I suppose I, I'll admit Anarchopac is a very explicit anarchist. So perhaps she's not totally like uh, against that. But I, I see something online. There's like it's, it's, a, it's a really jumbled mess of certain political factions and these factions aren't really there's they're they don't know what they're really talking about half the mm -hmm. time so i know you've i know a lot of people on my stream talk about how uh you, you talk a lot about tankies um nobody I, I online who does leftist politics has any idea what they're talking about i actually th at this point i unironically believe that liberals and conservatives and neo-nazis have a more cohesive understanding of their own ideology than your average online leftist does it's unfortunate, and I think it's probably because if you're well-grounded ethically, you know, and you've heard the right <laughs> arguments, I think it's pretty easy to fall in with leftism. I mean, God knows we're right, so that's to our benefit. Um, but I think very few people actually have a rigorous understanding of why they believe the things they're told to believe within our communities, and it leads to them being these insufferable ideologues who are rigidly obsessed with whatever quirk of mind whatever framework they happen to be introduced through and anything else is incompatible with that even if ideologically there's not even a contradiction between the two sets of ideas you know no 150 percent i and that's also kind of that can be a problem when you get into sort of the the theory community uh, as well and um, that's something I've definitely strayed away from. What what happens is, you know, people only have a set amount of time in their life to read, to do whatever. And so what usually happens is they say, I'm a Marxist or I'm, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to educate myself on Marxism. And what what ends up happening is there's a vertical warship apparatus on on how you 
uh, approach Marxism, right? So the goal when you want to read Marx, I think, or, or Lenin or, or anyone really is it's not, they're not, it's not a Bible, right? Telling you explicitly how to go about things. It's, it's to give context about a current historical situation. And maybe and to feel smart. Well, uh, it's some people, yes, that's, that's definitely it. I, I would like to think that, um, I would like to think most people um, who take the time to really read theory, it's, it's a little bit more critical than that. But definitely, um, I would say sort of online Marxist, right, that um, people call tankies, that's, that's 100% correct. I, I try to avoid um, a lot of sort of online, I, I, I want to say like maybe online lingo or alienating lingo, because I, I think there are a lot of very well-intentioned uh, Marxist-Leninists that, again, they only have uh, X amount of time to read, and, and so they're just going to pick what they're going to pick to read what they already sort of ideological subs ideologically subscribe to. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a reinforcing mechanism rather they're not reading critically or anything like that. So yeah, the I, Bible I line really resonates with me because I feel like when, if you're, if you're a Marxist and I certainly subscribe to many of the ideas that he prescribed, you know, maybe not all of them, but a great many of them, yeah. uh, particularly historical materialism, great idea. Yeah. And it's very frustrating to me that the tenant of this ideology fundamentally is that human action, civilizational change, are derived from a given set of material conditions. It's not about ideas we hold in our hearts. Those right. ideas can be modulated or altered through the conditions in which we live. That's not to say that ideas are entirely worthless, but often they're a product of these environments. Ultimately, the environment is what matters, and from that we must derive our analysis. I think that's like very boilerplate. I mean, that's almost an elementary school reading of Marx, but I think it's accurate up to the highest level. And it's frustrating to me when people who ostensibly believe in his ideas are completely opposed to the concept of approaching modern economic and social problems from a new angle. They're dedicated right. to Marxism or to Leninism, or more accurately, their understandings of it, to a degree of almost religious orthodoxy, where they know these terms and concepts, and any deviation from them is, you know... Um, is uh, uh, sacrilegious, even if the deviations are meant to better actualize the outcomes that Marx would have pushed for. That's no, that that's actually very, very well said. Um, that that's exactly right. I um, so yeah, no, it's it's the question is what I I guess what do we do with that, right? I, I'd imagine you said that's like your concern. How do we get people to your side, or maybe in other language, how do we sort of build relationships with people where we can connect with them and 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 try to um. You know, I know this is sort of quote unquote online lib language, but build a sort of common ground, especially like, man, among leftists, like I, you know, we don't have to apply that necessarily to people who are <laughs> like fucking Steven Crowder or anything like yeah, that. But, but at least w within our own house, right? I mean, you'd think. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I was actually talking on stream. I, I give them a little shout out. Um, um, they do the same thing, but Plastic Pills, the YouTube channel, he has a, has a pill pod. The, the, the podcast is called Pill Pod. I was talking to uh, a guy named Victor Bruzzoni. He's a, a PhD candidate at, I uh, can't remember what university in Canada, but uh, he was essentially talking about that and how he thinks um, he's going to school for political theory. And uh, mm -hmm. he kind of follows the term of like a, a, a nonpartisan leftist. And I, I think the best way to describe my immediate politics is probably just a nonpartisan leftist. I, I don't, I really do not like getting into the, the over ideological um, sort of gatekeeping or, um, like sort of sectarian sort of politics that's um definitely not my mo so I, that's always been my question too uh, as well and um it's always been how do you do that and um I, I i actually i don't think how we're kind of practicing politics online what's going on right in the digisphere uh, is anywhere near adequate at all uh, clearly yeah i would say so i think so initially my goal when i started streaming was I want to be a leftist who can show people it's possible to be a little, a little edgy, a little provocative, a little fast on the, on the, the fire, you know? Because at that time, all the leftists online, the visible ones at least, were, with all due respect to them, I'm not really shit-talking them here, but they're like oversensitive theater kids who sit in front of bisexual lighting and give video essay lectures. Um, there wasn't very much in the way of diversity of tactics, whereas the right had people who did video essays and debate lords. They had politicians, pundits, people who did news shows, podcasts. They had everything. They had the whole of the internet felt like it was in their hand. And I wanted to show it's possible to spread out a little bit. And at first, I think I was doing fine in that respect. But 
The issue is, I think a lot of people are attached to leftism as an aesthetic, and I deviate from some of those aesthetic trends. And I got more and more frustrated with that. You've probably noticed I've alienated a few groups online, you know, just a couple in my, in my day. To say the least. <laughs> yeah, and initially my goal was left unity. I don't think that's my goal anymore. I feel like that's kind of a pipe dream. I'm at the point now where I feel like in terms of utility towards socialism, like if you take a person's value and assess how effective they will be in assisting our push towards socialism, I actually believe your average social democrat online is much better, I mean exponentially better for that, than your average Marxist-Leninist. That the online left is carried almost exclusively by the quality of its ideas, but the actual people and their ability to engage in discourse is so terrible that they're in many cases being detrimental to the movement. And it's so sad, you know? like. How yeah. are there lefties biting the bullet on Dengism and the Uyghur Muslim genocide? Like, how, how is this even a thing? Like, this, not even to speak of the ethics of the situation, this makes us look terrible. There are a lot of people online who would otherwise be amicable to our ideas. They go online and they take a look at what lefties are up to, and there is a legitimate disagreement over whether or not an unprecedented security state apparatus being combined with an unprecedented decrease in fertility rates amongst a previously persecuted ethnic minority constitutes a genocide. Like, what, my God, do we, <laughs> what, have I, we I, given up on the workers here? What, what are we doing? Why are we having this conversation, you know? R right, I, I get that. And, and that's sort of, you know, I will say this is kind of, so far, this is kind of your brand, your, your job to do that. I, I, but I, I really think whenever it comes to stuff like this, like the, the Uyghur, genocide thing I, I think the the goal whenever it comes to sort of online politics or at least the goal that i've kind of tried to carve out is is to actually kind of like move past this quote-unquote like politics i i think learning I, I suppose um and getting a little bit more involved theoretically and and and, and reading and stuff i, I think I, i've kind of jumped to the point where like even any sort of minute discussion that you would have under the sort of context of online politics is going to be alienating to any degree. I, I would never debate or, or never talk to anyone, quote unquote, uh, um, about the Uyghur genocide. I, I think what would end up happening is the exact opposite of, of an intention of like some um, mutual understanding or, or something like that, because there's such hardcore, like ideological sort of um, barriers there right oh, and i think sure. the thing that i just breaks don't want to cede those... the territory to them you know that's my big worry that like well if we don't push against yeah. it they're the ones who get to be the poster boys for the left in a way they already are most online leftist communities that aren't like social democrat stuff like contrapoints i mean real leftist communities most of them are controlled by tankies despite them being a minority of the broader left they have a vastly disproportionate amount of control over our optics and I worry that's because a lot of people are afraid of leftist infighting. They're afraid to excise these communities. And I think we should be more willing to do so. Let them go do their red fash thing in some other social circles so they can stop polluting ours, you know? Well, I, I, so I, I see, I, I totally get the impetus of that, right? Because I, I, I am with you here on the whole, I, I think you had, um, the other thing that I did see on your channel, you had someone on, uh, like a, a Twitter, someone from Twitter about the Uyghur genocide or something like that. Um, um recently wait, what were i don't they like? know I have, I have no i have no idea i just thought no totally no offense at all i thought it was a terrible fucking idea to do <laughs> like like if you really like because i'm i'm in the i'm in the, the sort of same boat i think i if i'm you know familiar with your politics i i think that um claiming that the uyghur genocide or whatever is going on in china um th to say the least there's some sketchy stuff going on and i think we should probably yeah, to say the least i would say <laughs> yeah yeah probably and um but I think to me, like, I'm not necessarily worried about the whole uh, sort of like left optics, I suppose, because like, look how like, maybe if we can examine frameworks with so theory is kind of good, good for, uh, you know, like, we're, we're, we're discussing this in a, a sort of way that like indicates a form of like warfare, right? This is how like debate or, or anything in almost Western civilization is almost ever discussed under in a, in a um, sort of linguistic manner is it's, it's a it's an act of like, war right like we can't let these groups uh you know um totally destroy this left movement towards socialism or anything like that i i think that if we're going to approach these things kind of critically um i think the goal is 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 how 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 do we avoid that how do we 
uh, engage politically without the sort of um, verbal warfare sort of uh, symbolic setup, if you will. Um, that's a good way to put it. Sure, I, but I'm, that's, yeah. I mean, for me, it's all about the outcomes, right? I'm limited by the types of things that I'm good at. I don't make video essays. I do debates on right. live stream. I'm good at those, so I'm fine doing that. Um, I don't think that any previous methods of excising these communities have been very effective, though. This could seem a little bit self-centered. I don't have any hard numbers on this, but judging from the attitudes I've seen online, I would say that right now I've probably contributed the greatest possible amount of antagonism towards what I would call tankies that I've ever seen in the online left. That me using my community against them has been more fruitful in drawing that line than anything I've seen before. I don't think any other content creator has ever been as active as I have. And, I mean, if this method isn't effective, something else will need to be because we can't completely cede control of the optics of our movement to authoritarians. Somebody, something has to be done. I don't think it's possible to shout louder than them, though, because if you're in a crowd with 100 people, 99 of whom are shouting for peace and one is shouting for war, that one is going to sound a hell of a lot louder proportionally. I think it's really important to distance ourselves from these people. But if you think the atmosphere of antagonism is ineffective, um, it certainly isn't changing their minds, but I'll be honest, right. I feel like they're lost causes. What do you well, think the best option is? So, okay, so there's... I, I think the the best approach that we can probably take is to try to understand the parameters of our control, what we can control, uh, and how we can control that, right? Like, we're talking right now about politics as an abstraction that's that's totally separate to us. I, I think for the most part, we can't really control politics all that much. And I, and that's a very, that's something that as, as very like Western liberals, me, you, um, even all the online people who say, that, you know, the very anti-lib Marxist and stuff, they're, they're, they're liberals too. They, they live like liberals, whatever. But like, we're all, you know, living in this world, we are typical sort of like Western liberals. And, and one of those things that we do, one of the, one of the, the sort of uh, markers and markings of that is, that we kind of have inflated egos a little bit, I, I find. And oh, sure. That we, 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 yeah, we will. And we think that we can kind of control m more things than what we really can. So, and I, I think the sort of larger ideological discussion on how politics will operate on an institutional level, like whether fucking, like, is AOC a sellout or what do we do about people like AOC? I, I think that's a, a really, I think that's a kind of a, a lost cause. I, I think. Um, we can talk about those things, right? But I think that we should have at least no illusions that we're, we're not really doing a lot. So I think the approach that I take is to make art, right? That sounds really, I used to, I used to, you know, I, I read um, Herbert Marcuse uh, months ago and I, and I, you know, he, he would say this and I remember thinking, I'm like, man, that's really okay. That's kind of cringe. Like, oh yeah, you're going to solve these political problems with art. Well, it's, it's not to solve political problems. I, I think that art, is something that can kind of break down these really, really, really rigid, heavy ideological antagonisms. One of the only things that can. And I think the goal is to try to understand what we can control and what we cannot control um, and, and, and not to moralize people and try to, try to kind of facilitate and build a relationship because those are the things that you can control. Well, and we can those control are public things. opinion, certainly, can't we? At least I can, uh, to an extent, well, right? With the size of my community. It's important to be able to wrangle in the worst elements of your image. I mean, if it weren't for that, we would essentially be giving up any possibility of effective outreach to people who aren't already leftists. Can you control public opinion? Oh, I never... Well, like our optics, I, I, right? I mean, we can, like, you know, the... The right doesn't have to do this much because they're a bunch of, you know, orcs. They don't, they don't have to look good. They just attract right. people who adhere to their ideas. But for us, so here's an example, um, a really good one, I think. I feel like the online left was massively hamstrung early on in the 2010s because of this Tumblr SJW culture. Now, I don't use the term SJW de derivatively. I think that like, um, or sorry, not derivatively, um, in a negative context here. Um, but that's how they were referred. And when you saw leftist circles online back in that time, they were like these, derisively, thank you, Chad, uh, they were like these incredibly insular, hyper-fragile, hyper-sensitive communities that were completely uninterested in, like, optics at all. 
So most people's image of a feminist for five consecutive years was like Big Red, was like the screaming lady, you know? That was the whole image that people had. And I think a lot of the people who have that image, they're not like innately bad people. They just never saw a good left-leaning person. They never got to see a good example. So we're better about that in this respect now. The left isn't quite that bad now <laughs> online, I'm happy to say, though it has its moments. Um, but that would be an example of how, with enough public support, you can change the way in which we appeal to others. We definitely need to be appealing a lot more to, it sounds really dumb to say, less marginalized people. I think a lot of the left comes off a little bit antagonistic towards white people and men in a way that seems more driven by catharsis than by an actual pragmatic understanding of intersectional theory. That probably puts a lot of people off who could have otherwise been really strong allies, you know? So that kind of stuff. I just mean, by controlling public opinion, I just mean like, what language do we use? What what foot do we put forward to look best? And no, I, I, that's probably, yeah, no, that, that is, that is probably a, a, a decent approach to, to, to take a sort of left-wing politics, but I, you know, like I, maybe, you know, I'll say at least maybe some of the efficacy of, of something like theory, theory can kind of like, especially like, I think psychoanalysis, social psychoanalysis uh, at that can kind of give us some sort of ideas on what the totality is of what we're doing. Um so uh, maybe maybe i would maybe i would ask you do you find like so maybe i can present this so mm -hmm. i i don't think i i'll propose this i i really don't think that the sort of online de debate sphere i think it kind of alienates more than it than it helps um not to say that i i think debate on its own as as like an abstract idea is terrible but i do think that there are some sort of implicit things within the sphere of debate that we don't really pay attention to. Uh, and one of those things is, and I, I kind of alluded this, uh, to this with you when we were, we were chatting, mm -hmm. um, and I said like maybe the metaphysic, or like how metaphysics might play uh, it has an, impl uh, like, a, like there's, a, there's a consequence to, to metaphysics with, with politics and examining that. And I think, you know, using maybe a Marxist approach that one of the best things that in my mind, Marx talked about was the division of labor, right? And and he talked about well, why the division of labor was so bad is it, it sort of pitted man versus man. Uh, and, it, and it killed what he would call like our species essence. And that species essence comes from the, the core sort of like idea that um, we are supposed to cooperate, right? And, I, and, and, and things that sort of uh, get in between those cooper in between that cooperation unnecessarily are things that we should probably be critical about and, and cut out. So I mean, so I, isn't this I think just, you're, with all respect, I mean, isn't uh -huh. this just an aversion to infighting, but sort of post hoc rationalized through theory? I understood it that the species being of humanity through Marx's eyes wasn't cooperation, but rather creative production, our willingness to modulate our environment, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. I think no, the that's... online leftist environment's really terrible right now. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you think though, by uh, kind of like, taking the sort of debate approach, do you think that there's actually like a net positive outcome from that? Unquestionably. I get emails and DMs all the time from people who are conservatives, fascists, liberals, or tankies, which I think are indistinguishable from fascists, who are now a part of this community. If a person's already on the left, to be perfectly so, honest, I don't really give a shit about them. They're already here. Um, they're, they've already been moved over. Whether or not they're upset at me is entirely inconsequential to me. What matters to me is bringing over people who aren't already on the left. And I think that right now, the rest of the online left struggles significantly in doing this, with the exception of a few people. I think ContraPoints does a really good job at this, because ContraPoints mm -hmm. is exceptionally effective at understanding her target audience and appealing to them directly. There are other people like that, of course. I just happen to be fond of ContraPoints' approach. But I don't think that the debate bro aesthetic is particularly destructive um, in and of itself. I think the reason why I've garnered so much controversy is because there were a lot of bad people on the left who just don't like criticism. And they stir up a muck, and then people who would otherwise agree with me see a bunch of out-of-context clips, and that makes them hate me, even though they've never seen anything, you know? Right. No, no, no. And, I, and I'm sure to... I, I'm not exactly... I'm not the most online person, but... That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Absolutely, no. I, I think you're right. Like, But I think here, like... Again, you, you can imagine, again, if you stirred up that chaos on the internet going after a certain content creator or talking about 
someone in, in, in some respect. Um, I think, man, I really, I really got to think we got to be careful about that. Right. And it's not that these people may be like, that they're undeserving of criticism or stuff or something like that, but we got to think about the totality of what we're doing when we're, we're criticizing these people. Oh, I, sure. And it's not, you're I don't right. Think I'm like, too you, harsh though. I mean, I'm certainly I not as harsh to these people as the alt writers of the skeptic community was. I feel like you're right. Right. I don't know. And it's, and, and, and to be fair, yeah. It's not really, it's more of like a systematic thing, right? It's sort of like the sort of structure on how online politics goes, right? Like, it's not about you or, or destiny or, or any of these individuals or who are very big uh, on these online spheres of politics. But I, I think that um, there is an incendiary nature in how these structures uh, sort of operate uh, around politics. And um, no, man, I, I, so far... I'm not quite as confident as you, perhaps, although you receive emails from all kinds of people, you are a much bigger content creator than I. Um, but sort of my uh, small interaction with, uh, I would say, like online politics, it's not good. I'm not, I'm not very impressed. Um, it, it, it sort of really sucks. Uh, and it sucks in, uh, in ways that I think, I, in ways that I think are, are sort of inflamed by a sort of, um, antagonistic tonality throughout everything right that seems to be kind of how content creation right now is is, is going that's sort of well, the, the core of it right i actually get the most views and subs when i stay away from drama and just do oh, like great. news commentary the problem is is that i hate the rest of the online left and i don't think we should let them get away with um with being able to tank our optics and our analysis just because infighting is uncomfortable um, cause it is uncomfortable. I mean, antagonism is generally destructive, but well, it's I, I also a process of criticism. Work. It's a dialectical process, isn't it? I mean, they have a given idea, uh -huh. a set of ideas over how things should be run, and I have my own, and I guess we'll see how it plays out in the marketplace of ideas. I've grown pretty quickly, so that seems to lend some credence to my side. A frustration I have sometimes, people will say, like, nobody's been convinced to the left by Vosh, which... I don't know what kind of empirical studies they're looking for. You know, I haven't exactly gotten Yale oh, would... to analyze the, the, the metrics that I produce or anything, but the idea that people aren't pulled over to left ideas from my stream seems to me like one which is entirely contradictory to my understanding of the um, impact that I've had. So it, it feels like just people saying it, you know, like there's no real argument there. People just don't want to believe what I do works. You know? No, a hundred right. So you're you're saying like sort of the introduction into like online politics will get people invested and stuff like that. No, that's a hundred. Yeah. Yes, a hundred and fifty percent. And that's kind of uh, in in a lot of ways, it's sort of uh, that was sort of my quote unquote beginnings in a way, right? I think that's very common for for a lot of people. I I uh, thank God when I was in high school, I was you know listening to like uh, general um, YouTube political commentary and analysis. Um, but I, I think sometimes, though, like, it, it's really quick that we stop there, right? Um, I think that's, it's sort of, we, uh, we approach a, a certain position, and, and the, you know, that position may be correct, or, or, you know, a field of politics may be correct, like, you know, just general leftism. Uh, and that's wonderful. I, I, I do think, though, we probably shouldn't stop there. We should try to experiment more. We should try to figure out ways how we can go about things. Uh, and, um... You know, if you said like your your approach, you gain the most subs when you're when you're not being antagonistic or whatever. I think that is the most effective approach. But if you don't like it, I'm not here to tell. Well, you we can't see the space to red fascists, can we? I mean, I'm just see I'm the not red fascists. Tankies. I'm not comfortable. Uh, I don't. I don't. Being I don't a part think... of a political movement that's occupied, at least in significant part, by genocide deniers. Somebody well, has to say something about it, and a lot of other lefties aren't willing to because they're also opposed to the idea of infighting. It's funny, they will infight religiously to keep me out of the left, but genocide the knives? Right. Well, you know, that's whatever, we all have our opinions. Well, um, I, I think... Just mm -hmm. give me... Sp I, I'm not trying to argue with you about this, but give me a sure, specific sure. example. Like, you say it's ineffective or caustic or what have you. In a utilitarian sense, like with regards to the extent to which we are positively or negatively affecting broader advocacy for left ideas online, do you have like a thing in mind, a, a problem or like an idea or a, a, an approach that I've taken? Because I don't really think antagonism is a bad thing. I just think it's a part of change. Sure, no, I'm, but but then again, too, I'm not talking about you specifically. I don't know too much about you. I probably should have 
probably watch some no, more no, content. No, no, I was under the impression it. that because when people say debate b debate bros on the left, they're talking you about me. You attacked a lot, so I would understand that you'd probably yeah. No, no, no. Um, no, I I think just that's so far my my understanding on how sort of uh debate politics goes or or honestly political analysis at large. Half the time there's like a a weird simulation of what people think is politics, but really they're just talking about politics. Or, or and another thing I've been seeing lately is content creators simply just talking about other political content creators, and it's creates this really weird simulation of whatever. It's 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 dumb. Yeah, it's but, mostly um, positive. I try to have folks on when I like wait, them. I've liked you, your content you, in the past, so I'm happy to have a friendly conversation with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes well, it's so, antagonistic, but you know. Most of the uh, online leftists who really dislike me are too cowardly to come on and talk about it. So the engagement with them, the direct engagement, is extremely limited. But I do appreciate it when they actually uh, uh, find the courage to come on here and express some disagreement with what I do. I'm not talking about you. I mean the people mm -hmm. with whom I have actual disagreements. You know. Sure. Yeah. Hundred and fifty percent. No. Yeah. I, I suppose we can. Uh, I suppose we can kind of, uh, kind of, sort of go from there. Um, that that's that's again another another thing I, I think that can kind of spawn from this is a sort of like political hobbyism. Again, I uh, kind of originally come from a a pure like purely political background, and that's something that I. Oh, you cut out. You said that's uh, something I, that I. Oh, sorry. Did I cut out? Yeah, uh, that's something that I was the last thing I heard. Um, something that I've noticed is that political hobbyism is something quote unquote is is probably like something that people uh devolve into really really fast online um and uh yeah no 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 some I, I think that like in a number of ways too like with online media um that's sort of how we practice it that's another big issue that happens and and, and again truly I, I hope to you know hopefully like you know with what I, I try to do i make video essays you can do this in a number of ways but again trying to uh, approach things more critically maybe uh talk about a, a specific thinker or a specific uh work of theory or uh, and, and it goes another problem is i i have is uh, a lot of people who are very they're not marxist they, they think that i'm just purely like a a, a marxist youtuber theory is much farther beyond just pure marxism but um trying to understand the totality of what we're doing um trying to trying to build relationships Trying to move beyond this "quote unquote" political hobbyism is, is I, I suppose, what my goal is. But I, man, I, I don't, I don't, man, I, I really don't, I don't see it. It doesn't seem to be working very well online. But well, I don't know what you mean necessarily by political hobbyism. So obviously, the ideal leftist advocate would be going out there and marching and protesting, donating any excess income they have to mutual aid organizations, that sort of thing. Obviously, mm -hmm. most people aren't going to do that. That's always going to be a minority of a minority. Um, but the ground level there is at least to get them involved in the ideas. When people talk about political hobbyism, I often feel as though they're not actually pushing for people to do more. They're just attacking the political hobbyists who aesthetically they happen to disagree with. Because you know oh, who yeah. never gets called political hobbyists online? Tank Who's that? that? The online Marxist Leninists, they'll talk about, you know, China and North Korea, what have you. They never get accused of being political hobbyists, even though these are the most online, never touch grass types you'll ever find in a political movement. But the fact that they don't get accused of being that, of being a political hobbyist, makes me worry that political hobbyism is rhetorically synonymous well, with being a liberal. And to most leftists, a liberal just means a thing that I don't like. So I never really I, know what people mean when they say that. No, I'd probably consider um, typical, I, I maybe what you would call hammer and sickle. Twitter probably are, are the biggest definitions of political hobbyism, honestly. Well, you're it, reasonable, it's, it's, so of course you would say that, yeah. But, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. These people are, oh, God, they're the only group of people on Earth who I would actually, like, I want them all to move to North Korea. Every North Korea defender. Well, I just want them to go. Just, pl oh, please, God. They don't get internet access over there. We solve two problems at once. They get to live in their utopia, and I don't have to hear about it. I wish. Well, well again, I, I, I try not. I, I think it would be wise. I, I don't want to approach a sort of entire group of people through a raw, cynical outlook, but I, I understand your uh, 
sort of. That's because you I, haven't I been online long enough, my friend. Give it some well, time. No, I understand. I no, no, no. I understand the frustration beyond like no. I, I, I do. Well, maybe not to the degree you do. You're online, and you're well. That's your that's your your gig, man. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm I'm glad I don't have to to necessarily deal with that. But I, I think um, you know, like you said earlier too. Um, I red fascist. I don't think I would. I don't think. I think if we're going to be, I think we should be as specific with our language as possible, according to at least some political theory. I, I really don't think most, um, what, what like red fascism is that like Bolshevism or like like or like or not Bolshevism? Uh, sorry, uh, like Nazbolism or whatever. Not necessarily, like, that... because at least Nazbol sometimes performatively express support for white workers. I think je so. I'm on two minds of this because when I refer to tankies, what I, I feel like. I feel like I'm referring to people who engage in the same rhetorical and ideological tactics as fascists do, and they're pro-social democracy, but only if the social democracy is um, controlled by brown people. So, for example, your average tanky will praise, say, Vietnam, which there are benefits to Vietnam. There are some good things going on there. I have disagreements, but there's good social democracy going on there in some places. Um, but if you're if you're measuring how successful it is in that regard. It's far, far, far behind, say, Norway, but they'll call Vietnam socialist and Norway liberal, in spite of the fact that Norway is also filled with socialist parties who push for social democracy. I don't know what the difference is there, really. Um, and there's also a very weird propensity to focus on the aesthetic of authoritarianism, the defense of states and leaders, but not of workers. I never actually see these people talk about workers. Stuff like the emancipation of the proletariat, fair working hours, anything like that, like very, very basic stuff. Stuff believed even by liberals. I mean, some liberal social democrats fought with union organizers back at the turn of the 20th century to secure these things. They don't ever talk about these things. It's always defense of this glorious leader who's enshrined in a great tomb in the you know capital of their nation, or this state and all their atrocities and genocides. And it's all very weird. And I've had enough conversations with these people, the way they engage in the genocide denialism by, well, they don't just say it, but then they say like, oh, Western media, you know, is uh, biased and you're only hearing their side of the story. And actually, these people deserve it because they've been warring against the nation. The Turks said this about the Kurds, too. I mean, it's a play by play. It's every country does this for the group they genocide. It's just some people do it for Nazi Germany and some people do it for China and the Soviet Union. It's really frustrating. Um, but that's why I say red fascist. They don't map 100%, like one-to-one, -one, onto fascist tendencies, but I think they're basically like a mirror of those tendencies if you applied all of them to a different set of aesthetics, which is important, of course. <laughs> Fascism is largely aesthetic. Changing the aesthetics changes a lot, but otherwise, I think it's a pretty clean transposition. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I, I I would um okay I suppose <laughs> yeah I sorry suppose I, I'm sorry I didn't mean to like run the whole yeah. thesis down with you or anything that's that's how I tend to think about it also and this helps I hate them so I want to call them red fascists but I I feel like it, at least we're in the same current you know reactionary authoritarians who believe in hypernationalism xenophobia denialism of war crimes anti intellectualism that sort of thing it's just you know right no I I get that um and I and I have you know. I don't maybe maybe what you're referring to as well uh more concretely might be people who like consider themselves like marxist leninist um i i have i have issues on sort of the the, the general sort of plane of of leninism per se marxism leninism uh, mm -hmm. in today's context right like we've we've you know the entire our mode of production is far different than than theirs was and all, all number of things but um no, I, I personally, I, I would try to be careful not to. Um, I think there are a lot of even like on. I, I try not to bring a, an aura of overwhelming cynicism again, because uh, I, I think there's some people there that are that are um, they're curious, but they're again they're they're tied to their symbolism, they're tied to their sort of ideological warship apparatuses, their 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 people, uh, Lenin or or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do, I do yeah. want to say I agree with you, by the way. I do think that. I just think the same way of regular fascists, too. There are a lot of ex-fascists in my communities, and a lot of them are just like, you know, they're just like dumb teenagers um, who, who are well, insecure well, and anxious. They get roped into a certain set of ideas. and um, I feel like with the right pressures, they, they come out. It's usually as much a, a, a neurological thing as it is a, a, a political thing. It's a combination of insecurities 100%. that push them that way. 
I, but of course, I still have to be quite mean to fascists generally. I mean, if if I wasn't, then I'd be quite bad at my job. So, uh, I try to be compassionate to the individual for the most part. The attitude I always try to take is when I really disagree with a set of ideas, like a fascist, for example, not just mm -hmm. like different sock dem strategies for worker rights or whatever. I mean, a real disagreement. I come down hard, but I always try to emphasize like this is only because of the ideas that you hold. If you just took a second, if you just took a breather and didn't do this thing, <laughs> just enough with the genocide denial. If we just rethought this, if we took a breath, you are as valid a person as anyone else, and there's always room for you if you cut that shit out. I always try to take that attitude. Um, I don't know if it always sells well. Sometimes I get angry uh, when talking to people, but that's the, the goal, you know? Right. No, I, no, I, I'm with, I'm with you there. I, uh, I, I, no, I'm a hundred percent with you there. I think that's the, and that's important to emphasize that that doesn't seem to get emphasized a lot online though, right? That there's a mm -hmm. human being like, like, uh, you know, looking like behind that, that screen, there's, there's a person, right. And, um, you know, there's, even though they have certain symbols or the, what is it? The, the what's the neoliberal emojis like that weird fucking globe, th uh, the, the fucking know, fucking globe, the globe emoji. Yeah. yeah. Or, or the hammer and sickle. There's a human being behind there. And, and these people are anxious. They're vulnerable like you. Um, and so I, I, I would like to think that maybe I, I could bring a proposition to you, uh, that, Hey, try to probably try to stress that a little bit more, right? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> try not to, yeah, maybe try not to get as as uh as angry and cynical, right? Like, um, I, I you know I've been reading a lot of my headspace has been in um uh, Spinoza a lot lately. I've been reading the Ethics, and um, I uh, I'm reading Deleuze's book on Spinoza as well. And one thing that man, this this is kind of rarely do I read stuff like, and it actually kind of like really changes my attitude on things. Mm -hmm. But um, sort of the the importance of joy, right? And and um and communication and and just in things and in life in general. And, you know, one of the things that uh, Spinoza emphasizes is this sort of like, uh, like hatred can like completely like kill your um, ability to be affected. Right. In the his section on the affects, he means essentially like sort of emotions, but only emotions in a sense that they're like related to one another and they're going through a process. It's really abstract shit. I won't go into that, but um, no, I, I think he's completely right, right? I think when we, it sounds really kind of like almost like third grader, right? Like, oh, don't hurt someone's feelings. But I think it's important to try to at least minimize that. And not to say that perhaps you don't, uh, you know, that I just don't think online that's that's not the emphasis that that we hear. I think um, I think we got to be a little bit more kind to, we, uh, kind to each other, um, despite any, you know, really weird ideological shit. And that goes for, to, well, and that, that for goes rhetorical to people. effectiveness, if nothing else, right? If if nothing else, I, I I I'm not as concerned with rhetorical effectiveness, but mind you, not to say that that's not important, right? Um, uh, I think that may you know optics may only go so far. I think again, truly, when you can try to you know build relationships with people and and try to connect with them, try to you know communicate, do stuff. Um, I think that's a little bit more impactful. But yeah, no, sure, definitely. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, that's one of the. Um... That's one of the reasons why it's really, really important, I think, to form like a proper community online. Whether we like it or not, people who are moved over politically online, whether to the left or to the right, they're moved over because they fall into the orbit of larger figures. Very rarely is it just like a community on its own. Usually a content creator is like the, the axis around this orbit. Mm -hmm. And there are good and bad sides to that. It's very effective, you know, rhetorically, which is important. Uh, I think it very, very important that we end up with the, you know, the numbers advantage against fascists. Um, but the downside is that it can make it very difficult to breach those walls. Uh, I've always had trouble with this because um, there's a sort of um, fake placidity that you're expected mm -hmm. to engage in when speaking with your contemporaries, other content creators, you know, like, uh, oh, oh yeah. I love what you do, you know, you did so great here, and I cannot for the life of me do this. If I have a problem with somebody, oh. I <laughs> make sure they know. Um, it's something for which I've been criticized plenty of times. I think there's a principle to that that I'm generally fairly okay with, but it can make it difficult to convince the followers of that person, like, oh, holy shit, we just got a bunch of subs, I'll check that out in a second. Um, that um 
it, it can make it difficult to to breach those walls to bring people over um, in a in a forthcoming way. So it's something that I want to work on, and I want to criticize liberals more often. By the way, I feel like I so rarely have a problem because you know, content generation is oriented around what's available to you, what's interesting to the people watching. When I go online and I see all the hate threats about me, they don't come from liberals. They come from Nazis or they come from like the rest of the online left. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's very easy to take that and run with that energy. But with like the liberal community, it's so big and it's so neutral. Like liberals, they don't, except for maybe like the K-Hive, they're all, you know, they're all doing their own thing, brunching. So I'd like to spend more time uh, lovingly yelling at them. I think that'd be nice. Well... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, perhaps. I, I, I think that, um, well, it depends on certainly how you go about it. But uh, I guess everyone, you know, you're, you're dealing, I suppose, we're dealing with a confusing, like, network of people. Everyone's different and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But um, no, yeah, I mean, definitely the whole, I personally have seen, um, you know, I've never, I don't really think about it. I, I suppose I'm trying to find words to put this into, I don't ever really think about it as in, like, liberals or, like, leftist per se I, I find a lot of the the definitions we use for liberal uh doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes um or sort of the the terminology we'd use even for like like leftist it doesn't mean a lot um i dislike labels it's just yeah useful in the shorthand ideally i'd like to never use them at all i, I mean that'd be tough but it should all be about the ideas right the underlying ideas that's why <laughs> I think we're stumbling. I think we're stumbling across something right there. That's exactly sort of I find trying to sort of pin a certain label to a group of people again does more to alienate than it helps. I, I personally don't use them. That's why I like a lot of people. I have frustration, right, with the sort of on a theoretical level, not with like on a personal level with like Marxism, Leninism, and mm -hmm. I talk about that, which is honestly kind of funny too. Uh, I had someone in my chat who said that uh, someone brought my name up and and part of your community, and it's totally fine. They said that I was like a tanky. I was very surprised because typically I'm called a fucking lib. Um, Somebody told but, uh, me you were a tanky. I, I know sometimes my community goes a bit off the handle, so I certainly <laughs> don't get that impression from you or your content. I, um, yeah, I, I, I just want to say with, with regards to the ideas thing, so I care very much about rhetorical efficiency. Um, using labels can put people off. What's that old meme, you know, like um, my parents, when I explain socialist ideas to them, Versus my parents when I use the word socialism while giving those explanations and like the, right right their faces just fall you know and I and I get that too um, the one thing that really really bugs me I guess about the online left too and okay this is gonna come off a little cynical but you'll have to forgive me here I've had a <laughs> lot of conversations with leftists I mean I've been doing this for only about two and a quarter years now but in that time I've probably talked with about fifty or sixty leftists who disagree with me in a contentious public manner and. I think the number of times that we, I had the opportunity to speak with a leftist who disagreed with me and then clarify those disagreements with a thorough engagement with basic questions like, how do we best achieve workers' rights? I think that's happened maybe once or twice. Usually it turns into some giant pissing match over who's more of a lib. And that's very, fr <laughs> that's very frustrating for me. Um, because uh, given that a lot of the lefties I disagree with online tend to be uh, of the tanky variety, I guess I would be closer to a lib than they are, since they have abandoned the tenets of progressive liberalism. Uh, so I lose that battle, uh, even if I feel my points are more sound. But one way or another, it's something I'll try to work on more in the future, you know, guide it towards the ideas. It's so an improvement I want to make. Right, and, and that's like... I, I think when you again you, you you start scratching at the surface of labels and stuff like that, you um you sort of uh, instigate a core like uh, emotional reaction, right? Or you know a libidinal reaction to that. There's like this sort of uh, innate thing that 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 happens, and their, their personalities switch off like that. And that happens to all of us. We have these uh, emotional sort of ties to certain things. Um, I wouldn't say maybe all of us. Some of us might be a little bit better at keeping that in check, but. Um, that's, yeah, that's ultimately why there's a, I, I had a, I had another conversation again to, to plug the, the same guy. I've, he at least helped me with, uh, this, this sort of language. Again, he's the, the, the YouTuber plastic pills phenomenal, makes amazing videos. I was talking to him. He has the approach not to talk about politics simply because of that. And I, that's not quite, I wish he'd talk about it more. Cause I, I think the idea that, um, if we should have a conversation, try to avoid certain tag words, try to understand 
the totality of what's going on, right? Like even if we uh, engage with someone um, politely, um, if we start prodding at a certain ideological sort of uh, word or something like that, um, it, 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 it almost like the entire, um, the entire discussion just disintegrates. This is again, in, in my mind, a little bit of, uh, you know, talking about liberals. This is sort of my problem with it, kind of the idea of the rational subject, right? The, the liberal Western subject who can think about things we need a form of uh, sort of like um, rational engagement. And, and I think on, on, its, on its own, that's a good idea. I think that's fine. But it just doesn't ever typically work out like that in reality. And um, I think trying to find communicative ways to, to get around that and those emotional responses, that's one of the things that I'm kind of, that my head's always in. I don't really have a lot of answers, I, I got to admit, uh, to be completely honest, but that's a lot of where my headspace is. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, we're all we're all trying our best is what matters most. Um, anyway, we're we're actually coming up on the hour, and um, I want plenty of time to embarrass myself with my poor gameplay. Uh, sure. So I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. Um, seriously, it's definitely one of the better conversations that I've had recently. Um, and uh, would you could you shout yourself out fully? Yeah, yeah, sure. So. Um... YouTube channel um, is Epoch Philosophy. Epoch, uh, not epic. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, either way, either way works. I think you can pronounce the word uh, both ways. Um, Twitter, Instagram is both Epoch Philosophy, Epic Philosophy. Um, I make sort of theory and philosophy uh, YouTube videos um, on a number of topics. Typically, I'll like to take like a text um, and try to make the text or the book a lot easier to understand. Sometimes I'll make some video essays uh, as well. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I would hope that a lot of people here who are, are genuinely uh, interested in politics and political outreach and stuff like that. I, I think, you know, again, I, I'm a politi I, I've come from a political science background. I found that critical theory, theory at large, um, philosophy was a little bit better at addressing those things than, than what I ever would have imagined. Uh, and, and so I've become much more engaged with sort of that, that uh, academic environment, uh, if you will. And uh, I hope that maybe you guys could come around, watch a video, or or maybe read something of your own. And um, yeah, other than that, uh, if any of you guys feel free, reach out to me. Um, I'm always down to talk about theory. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate that. Um, no, yeah, thank you. I um, no, you you were very kind. I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Best. Uh, take care of yourself. Okay. All right. Awesome. You too. Avoid Bye. the online shenaniganry as as much as you can. Okay. Dude, I will try my best. <laughs> you too, you. hopefully. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Bye.